So here's my son Alexander Kirilov, first round draft pick, Minnesota Twins of uh, this past year. He was voted Appalachian League Player of the Year. Uh, he was raised on a very different hitting philosophy. I believe it's a very innovative philosophy. Okay, nothing transforms a hitter faster than improving his timing. The same innovative techniques that I showed uh, Alex, I, I can show other hitters. Okay, these detailed timing techniques are small, but the uniqueness is this is what superior hitters already have and they're already doing. I teach hitters what they do in their subconscious, and I just bring it into a state of awareness for them. I take what they already do, and I'm just helping them organize it. So listen patiently, and I'll tell you the recipe. It starts right here, understanding that hitting is like unlocking a combination lock, right? You have to know the combination to pull it open. You know, you turn right, you turn left, but if you're just one digit off, that's not gonna open. Okay, so here are the here's here's the combination that I taught Alex. I teach other hitters how to how to improve themselves and be consistent. Right, number one, I taught Alex that the cornerstone to this combination lock is recognizing that every pitcher has the same common denominator. We're timing the common denominator, not the pitcher's release point. Number two, I taught Alex how to see the ball earlier in the flight path how to time his vision back to the pitcher's common denominator. This improves his pitch selection. I showed Alex how to time his adrenaline, his body's natural steroid, to the pitcher's common denominator. I taught Alex how to time his hitting model back to the pitcher's common denominator and his hitting tempo to the pitcher's common denominator. I showed Alex how to make swing adjustments after the bat hits the ball. This is a right brain hemisphere training technique. Okay, now, now these points are only the basic things I showed him, right? The system becomes very complex because it lends itself to become custom tailored to fit every hitting model and every hitting tempo. It's fundamental and yet a complex, innovative approach. Okay, these four points begin with the pitcher's common denominator. And please listen patiently and be patient with me. I'm going to describe to you um, the, the realms of the common denominator, but today, as I mentioned before, I can't tell you what the common denominator is. I'm going to save that for our next meeting. Okay? When Alex is standing at home plate looking at the pitcher, he's waiting for a key moment to take place. This is the common denominator. He's not wandering. He knows the key moment on every pitcher. It's at this mo key moment that the batter reaches maximum alertness. Either you know it by instinct or you can be taught it. Right? This reduces doubt, apprehensiveness, and reluctance. I taught Alex how to lock in his vision, his adrenaline, with precision timing to this common denominator. It gave him consistent control of his body, and this gives him the feeling that he controls the ball at home plate, not the pitcher. Really short, this is Alex on the right, and here's a cannon on the left. Now, if we're timing just the release of the cannonball, right, it's kind of difficult when I have no nothing to measure off of, not even a wick, right? When suddenly just boom, it comes out, I try to get ready. But what if you would put a countdown clock above the cannon, and it, it read three, two, one, Boom! Well, with a countdown clock, it's a lot easier to predict what's about to happen. And that's where the common denominator on every picture, which is the same, lends itself and gives the batter an advantage. Not left to wondering when I need to get started, but he, it's a, a definitive marker. And the best hitters, a lot of times, they have this by instinct, and if they, if they sort of lean off of it, you can explain it to them and it brings it back and brings greater consistency back to the swing. The common denominator is gold because it's the indicator to the batter that he's about to see the ball. Using the release point is too late. So here's some clips of some pitchers and here's Johnny Cueto. And we, we're, Johnny Cueto makes it very clear that he alters his pitching delivery and tempo to throw the batter's timing off. 
He's trying to disrupt his timing. And here he shortens up his delivery. So whether you have this style or a submarine style pitcher, okay, you know where the common denominator is, and the common denominator is going to lead the batter to the point of exit. Timing the common denominator is like jumping on a merry-go-round. You see, the eyes are leading and predicting. The eyes are not uh, reading something that happens in the past or worse, the present, right? So when I hit this clip here of a, of a uh, merry-go-round, this is say you're the orange section, and you're going to jump on and you know, right now. That's the area you want to land. So as it goes around, your eyes are following it. If you give yourself enough time to jump on, you'll have enough orange. But, you know, if you wait too long and you wait to jump on last, there's desperation just to try to get on. So treating the pitcher like his common denominator, treating the pitcher like he's a merry-go-round, and you know when the exact spot is going to happen, and it makes it clear you're not going to wander anymore, but when do I jump on? You know, it's a very definitive spot. And it eliminates a lot of stress, a lot of reluctance, a lot of doubt for the batters. Okay, number two. The second thing I showed Alex was to time his vision to the common denominator, not the release point. Timing vision is critical to pitch selection. All right, he was taught to set his vision to the first spot he will see the ball, not release point. You see, the eyes need to win the race to that first spot. There's a starting line, and then there's the finish line. There's five different ways a batter is looking at the pitcher, right? Now, Alex is taught to, um, and this is controversial, I mentioned before, to where do I see the ball? Do I see the ball when it first comes out of the pitcher's hand at like two, three inches off, this, off his fingers? Do I see it a foot later? Do I see it three, four, five feet later? Whatever, you know, I guess, theory you base yourself upon, whether it be, you know, that theory or science, you know, learning what um, uh, the depth perception you're going to you know, fix your eyes at, how far away at the, at the starting point is really important to timing his vision, okay? Now, Alex showed this to a, one of his players, a struggling catcher, uh, batting below 200 most of the season, but the last 10 days, went on a tear and uh, he told everybody at the end of the season because he had been picking Alex's brain towards the end of the season asked Alex what he, what he does and Alex you know shared with him the idea about the common denominator and how to time his vision to the common denominator and he says you know what after he did this he said to everybody what Kirloff is doing is really working so it's just a, a testimony a modest testimony I want to share with you that you know how fast that this innovative approach works. Example of late eyes, late vision. This uh, affects the pitch selection. Uh, as mentioned before, I showed you this clip of Alex at 15 years old playing in a 16U tournament. I'm in center field and uh, holding the camera about almost 400 feet away. And I showed you, I could see Alex's eyes. This would really stood out to me. His his body was dancing with the pitcher, his legs was in time, his adrenaline was right, but there was something still off. And I showed you, when I would just study the hitter's face, it jumped out at me that his face is still looking forward at the pitcher, and the ball is passing by his vision. He's not picking up late. He did okay in this tournament uh, weekend, but it wasn't his normal self. And this is where it was very pronounced to me that there's timing with the vision. Now watch his Dodger prospect. His head is still looking forward while the ball is coming in on its flight path. His Rosario, same way. You could see the stillness of his head not moving and picking the ball up early in the flight path. So this is a technique that we actually can teach our players, not just go by instinct anymore. If they have the instinct for it and they don't, they stop doing it, there's a technique, an innovative technique to help them get this back on track to time 
his vision to the common denominator. Now, this is the controversial subject. We don't see the ball out of the hand. Instead, we see an illusion. Okay. Uh, the old school way is you can see the ball out of the hand, and maybe there are some certain players that are very exceptional and they can see this. But for the most part, you know, when, when Fox Sports and, and they get into these labs and they, they put nodes on the, the hitter's body and they measure you know, the, uh, the, uh, the tracking what with, with their eyes are looking at, this is what they discover inside the science labs of, of major league hitters, okay? Take a listen. The distance from the rubber to home plate is 60 feet 6 inches. Subtracting 5 or 6 feet to account for the pitcher's stride, it takes a fastball traveling at 90 to 95 miles an hour, about 400 milliseconds, to get from the pitcher's hand to the catcher's mitt. The batter is already at a disadvantage because it takes the human brain around 80 to 100 milliseconds just to process the image that the eyes are taking in. Hitters begin predicting the trajectory of the ball based on the movement of the pitcher's arm before he even makes his hand. This makes up for the fact that he won't actually see the pitch until it's a quarter of the way towards it. He won't actually see the pitch until it's a quarter of the way towards it. Okay, so again, this is why it's important to understand, and when you're working with the batter, how to how to time the vision to the pitcher's common denominator, right? And understanding, okay, at what depth are we gonna actually train our hitters to to pick the ball up? Is it is it a you know? Um, six inches out of the hand, a foot out of the hand, four feet, five feet, six feet. It's very critical because now when, when they're, that's their focal point, okay, when they, when they can see the, the ball better at a better depth perception, then they give the brain more time to process what's about to happen, you know. As I mentioned before with my son, you know, there, there's five ways a batter will look at the pitcher. And you, we need to understand what's their common way, what's their pattern, right? I told you before that Alex would look directly at the pitcher's face and then slide his eyes over when the key moment would happen. But I showed you from the center field view, Alex's eyes were still looking at the pitcher and the ball's already coming out. So he's not picking the ball up, at, you know, when it's five feet, six feet, he's picking the ball up, maybe, maybe he's not picking up to the halfway point. And then there's an act of desperation and panic. Whatever it takes to get my bat down into the swing, all you have to do to get it done. Okay, so you can pick what side you're gonna to subscribe to. You know, I, I believe the science that we don't see the ball out of the hand. Instead, we see an illusion. Okay, and here's a picture of Billy Wagner. And if you follow baseball, you know that he threw 100 miles an hour, right? Right now, you see his arm is in external arm position. It's going to flip into internal arm position. This is like a catapult. When he lets his lever go, thump. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to pick it up, you know, five, six, seven, eight, maybe ten feet later, all right, if, if you're good. So it's just a matter of where do you subscribe to and train the batters to understand, you know, adjusting the vision to depth perception. This is part of timing to the vision. But it makes it a lot easier when you understand there's a common denominator leading it out so you're not taken by surprise and you're waiting for the release point and now I have to desperately try to catch up to it and panic and then my, my then it looks like my swim mechanics are awful no that was just because I just didn't see it earlier in the flight path I was reacting when I first saw the pitch and good hitters are doing this and they have an instinct for it but they fall out of it and this is part of understanding the combination to the combination lock and that's this that I need to have better predicting skills you know I'm not I'm, I don't want to react to the past it's already out of his hand I don't want to react to the present it's 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 coming out of his hand right I want to re react to the future the best athletes in any sport they're reacting a, to the event one tick of time before it's about to happen just the same idea with the, the illustration with the, the merry-go-round Time and vision. Time and vision again improves pitch selection. Now, now here's Max Kepler, right? He had a hot August, and I'm going to show you an example of what good timing with the vision looks like, all right? Um, there's five ways a batter watches a pitcher, you know? Um, Max Kepler, maybe he's gazing or looking at the pitcher's face, but there comes a key moment when he's got to get off that gaze and switch his eyes to where the exit point's going to be. 
and even more, like I mentioned before, but find the depth of the ball. That's what advanced hitters are already doing. But when you bring it to light, it's easier just to open up that combination. You know, um, every professional hitter and, prof and pitching coach should know the batter's dominant eye for, for, for many reasons, right? But for one is this, when a batter's training, you know, he can put more attention and focus on, on picking up the ball with that dominant eye. You know, a lot of batters already do this, but it's important to just, you know, instill it into our, our batters that we're training, okay? Um, because for the pitching calls also, the pitching coach, because, you know, there's the mechanics, you know, lend itself to sometimes there's holes in the swing, right, because of the mechanics. But a bigger part is there's a hole in the swing because of the batter's dominant eye. I mentioned before the phrase, how about trying to pitch against the batter's dominant eye because every batter is going to see the ball good down the middle but sometimes he doesn't see it good inside or outside so when you know that weak lane and there's a technique to how to watch the batter how he takes the pitch that's going to reveal that weak lane so if you pitch you know the pitch is to the weak lane you're going to induce weak contact okay so let's take a look at Max Kepler from the center field shot take a look at his eyes there comes a key moment when he has to switch and find the ball early in his flight path, okay? And you can say, well, Dave, this is just basic stuff. You know, we're already doing this. You know, pick the ball up at the pitcher's window, right? But there's a key moment when you have to switch, right? And you can be too early and look at nothing, and it becomes, like, awkward, right? But you have to switch, and not only just switch over, switch at the right depth perception, Okay, this game is extremely fast, and it's an important factor hitters are already doing instinctually, but you want to take their instincts and actually label it so they know specifically, so that when they're in the game and they're fouling pitches off and they can't figure it out, well, you know what? When they know it you know, and label it, they can, they can change before the next pitch happens. So this is where the common denominator makes it so easy for the batter to time his vision. As mentioned before, like Alex's friend, the catcher, he, he Alex just, you know, carefully just uh, casually just explained this to him and he took off. So, you know, if it works for hitters instantly, it can work for your hitters too. Okay, another note I mentioned to you was this. Um, seeing the ball to the finish line and how the, the face wins the race um, Garrett Moss UC Berkeley you know discussed the, the phrase I love it says the brain's working faster than real time all right the brain is pushing the ball forward into, into its next position examples when you watch a tennis player ping pong player good hitters are pushing the ball forward just before it's in it's in its exit okay so I've learned that you know a technique sometimes players aren't adjusting you know with this idea of common denominator or, or starting point and I've learned that it's very unique that we can teach the players to get to the point of contact uh, efficiently and then subconsciously they start to get themselves to see the ball early in the flight path because they don't have enough time to get their face down to win the race it's a very unique innovative technique and I'm amazed as I mentioned before how fast it works with the hitters who uh, who can just respond to this side of the hitting rather than the uh, the starting point number three I taught Alex how to time his adrenaline how to turn on his alertness his body's natural steroid to the pitcher's common denominator you know we know steroids it helps improve vision and improves alertness, well, guess what? Your body's already producing the same effect with its adrenaline, right? And this is what makes the game slow down. You know, we know sports psychologists talk about you know, keeping a heart rate down and staying calm. You know, there's a lot of value to that, right? But as mentioned before, nothing is gonna happen athletically when you need to create force. It could be on the football field, the tennis court, right? Good athletes are timing their adrenaline, and there, there's a technique on how to teach it, right? It only took me about 15 years to put it into words, something that I did that was my glue that got the hitting to stick, 
and, and this is something that the hitters are already doing themselves and we're just bringing it to a state of awareness, right? We time the adrenaline to, to your specific hitting model, right? And you time the adrenaline to your specific athletic disposition, your tempo. It's what makes the game slow down. Okay, now here's an example of what late vision and late adrenaline looks like, uh, otherwise known as slumps, okay? Put your body into this hitter's uh, body. Put put on his spikes and feel what he's experiencing on these swings, okay? Uh, you can see that there's a lot of desperation, a lot of panic. Seeing the ball late in the flight path. Okay, that's an example of what late vision and late adrenaline looks like, right? Now... Stop and think about it. The, 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 I was asked before, well, how many strikes is on the batter? You know, I mean, that could play into a factor to this, right? But either, whether it doesn't matter if it's um, the count is 2-0 and or 2-2 two and two or whatever it is. See, hitting is like no other sport, you see. You know, when in other sports, when you play football and we're coming up to each other to hit each other, you have to hit me and I have to hit you, right? If, if we're in tennis court, if I hit you to tennis ball, you have to hit it back. You see, but, but baseball is different. You know, if it counts 2-0 and oh, or maybe it's even 1-2, and two, the hitter does not have to swing, okay? It's not like any other sport. So when a hitter is making sure I got to get a good pitch to hit, then sometimes there's apprehensiveness that settles in. There's reluctance. There's doubt. You know, the other sports you have to respond, hitting you don't. So when you can time your adrenaline and time your vision, it gives you control of your body and then it feels like you have control of the whole entire moment. Better, it feels like you control the ball. Number four, I taught Alex how to fix any mechanical mistake, all right, on the deceleration side of the swing. This is right brain activation. Okay. And it, it falls in, in hand in hand with the idea was of a, a sports term called backward chaining, right? Now here I show you some clips of some basketball shooters and on the far right, Manny Ramirez. Okay. The basketball shooter sometimes when actually makes a shot will keep his arm up above his head and his wrist is bent. This is because the, the, the shooter wants to hold on to the mechanism that helps to create this great shooting arch and this great follow through. So they'll hold it for a couple seconds while the ball's still in the air, let going into the hoop, right? Likewise, Man Ramirez back in 2008 was on a tear, especially when he got traded to the Dodgers. It was common for Man Ramirez, after he would hit a home run, he would raise his arms back out into the space, okay? And it looked like he may, may have been showing up the pitcher and the home runs. I really don't believe it at all. It's like this basketball shooter. He's putting his arms back out to where extension was. It was a mechanism that helped him to get that great swing off. The other thing I talk about when you're working on the deceleration side of the swing and how you can fix any mechanical flaw or any anatomical you know, position that's, that's gone awry, um, what helps you to, to control things better was the Angelo Dundee principle. And we talked about the boxing technique that, uh, that helps hitters improve their hitting. The Angelo Dundee principle was the principle that we used to help hitters also to create more bat speed. It was a technique that Angelo Dundee taught Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard to generate more hand speed. Well, it also works for our hitters. So here are some clips of Alex uh, demonstrating some techniques that we use to uh, get a better swing off and, and exercising and punctuating the decelerating side of the swing. The decelerating side of the swing, you know, helps bring things back in order uh, anatomically. And it's amazing how it works in conjunction with the right brain hemisphere because, you know, when a ball is coming in, I just want to think about the ball on the way in. You know, we can correct amazingly anything that that hitting mistake we do on a forward action by adjusting things on the finish of the swing, right? He's also demonstrating the, um, the Angel Dundee boxing principle uh, with great efficiency.
any mechanical flaw the hitter has can be readjusted from the deceleration side versus the acceleration side. Here are some major league swings. Again, every mechanical adjustment can be made after the batter hits the ball. Not on the acceleration side, but on the deceleration side. You can see the Angel Dundee principle is being exercised, right? And there's a technique that we can actually teach hitters where they have a controlled, violent swing. Now see all these hitters are, are holding on to the bat with two hands, but the, the, the application of these principles also lend itself to players who have a, a one-arm release swing. There are certain rules that fall into, to, into category for these guys that are that are teachable and that are um, you know applicable. So let's give this hitting system some traction and let's put this into action. Implementing the system into your training regimen. Nothing transforms a hitter faster than improving his or her timing. Don't just bump into it, know it. There are two main hitting video series. The first one is the best hitting drill ever. Okay. With that system, I, I show the hitters how to efficiently master the mechanical movements of, the, of their swing. There's, there's elements inside that video series that tells you about how to increase your bat speed, how to hit more home runs, believe it or not. And it gives you an, an overall uh, picture of training the players and even the young players are talking as early as you know seven eight nine years old I mean there's training te techniques that I show the college guys and pro guys that the eight nine year olds you think we so it's, so it's so simple but it's still it's so advanced at the same time that's the best hitting drill ever also uh, the combination of the best hitting drill ever and the, the 10 hitting models for timing they're merged together inside the video series called the, the World's Greatest Hitting Formula. That video series is almost four hours of instruction that gives you, it goes in great detail about timing techniques. And you know, plus, obviously, it merges with the, um, the, the best hitting drill ever, the 10 hitting models, hitting models for timing. But, you know, if you're a coach and you're a player and you're ambitious about, you know, your career and your future and, and your job, then th these are essential staples you need to have, okay? Everyone's got to realize whether you're a coach or manager, sometimes your clock is ticking. How long can you manage? How long can you coach? You know what I mean? You want to get more wins for your team. You want to improve your skills. And you got you to be innovative. This video series has all that. Lord bless you. I'm Dave Kirloff.